In this video, we take a look at reverse Polish notation, doing a review to get you ready for an exam. Now, if you're looking for an in-depth guide, maybe this is your first time learning or doing reverse Polish notation, we have a video on that as well, and I've left a link in the description. Let's go ahead and take a quick review of the steps and the rules. Remember, if it's an operand, which is simply a number or letter, it's gonna go into the string, it does not go into the stack. If it's an operation, which is simply a mathematical symbol, it goes into the stack based on order of precedence. And that order of precedence we're referring to is PIMDAS. P for parentheses, E for exponent, M for multiplication, D for division, A for addition, S for subtraction. Now, if the operations are equal or less in precedence, the one in the stack is popped from the stack and put into the string. The current operation is then pushed to the stack. Now, if the operation is greater in precedence than the one in the stack, it is pushed on top of the stack. And this is how a stack works, both by popping and pushing. Now, if you get an open parentheses, you just keep stacking. Now, you're still going to follow those rules until you get a closed parentheses. Everything between the open and closed parentheses must go into the string. And when we're talking about the string, we're talking about our final answer. And you do not place an open or closed parentheses in the string. So stacks. Stacks work on the first in, last out principle. You can also say that stacks work on the last in, first out principle. When things are added to the stack, we say they are pushed. When items are removed from the stack, we say they are popped. If you're looking to program a stack, we have a video on that as well. Okay, so stacks, pushing. This is my top of the stack, and when we push an item, it goes to the very bottom of the stack. So here, I have a multiplication symbol that has been pushed to the stack. Now, we have another multiplication symbol. It gets pushed to the stack. This multiplication symbol will leave before this one because it was the last in first out. This is going to be the last leave because it was the first in last out. And that's how the principle works. So here we're going to pop a multiplication and then we're going to push a division sign. When we pop it from the stack, it goes away. We push the next item in and there we have our division. And it is that easy. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some past exam questions to get you ready for an exam. So we take a look at our first problem, which is a plus b divided by 6. So let's go ahead and let's follow those rules. So the first thing we have here is we have a parentheses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this off, and I'm going to push that to my stack. That is an open parentheses. Then I have an a. All right, well, that is not a mathematical symbol, so I know my a goes right here. I have part of my answer. Then I have a plus sign. Now, because I have an open parentheses, I keep pushing to the stack. So I'm going to put my plus sign here. Then I have a B. Well, B is not a mathematical symbol, so I know that's the next part of my answer. Then I move to this closed parentheses. Now remember, we said once you reach a closed parentheses, you're going to pop everything between it. Well, what's between it? It's going to be a plus sign. So I'm going to put that plus sign right here, and that is going to clear my stack. So I'm going to go ahead and clear my stack. The next thing I'm going to move to is I'm going to move to this division sign. That is a mathematical symbol. I'm going to push that to my stack. Then I have this 6, so I'm going to go ahead and work with that. I've reached the end. Now what I need to do is pop each item from the stack. We'll only have one item in my stack, which is the division sign. So I'm going to put that right here, and just like that is how we convert that one to reverse Polish notation. Let's go ahead and take a look at past exam question number two. And taking a look at this one, we have some parentheses here, and that's okay. When you're working with reverse Polish notation, no need to get nervous. Simply remember the rules, follow them, and you'll be fine. So let's go ahead and let's do this together. So we have a three, not a mathematical symbol. I'm going to put that in my string. I check it off so I know that I've completed that one. Then I have this asterisk. That's a mathematical symbol for multiplication. Simply going to push that to my stack, and I'm going to check it off. Now I have an open parentheses. Not a problem. Go ahead and put that into my stack. Now I have an x. That's a variable, so that's going to go into my answer. Then I have another asterisk. Not a problem. I'm looking for that closed parentheses so I can start popping these items uh, between the open parentheses. Here I have a Y. I'm going to put that into my answer. Here I have a plus sign. Now, 
What I have to do here is I need to compare my plus sign to my asterisk. Are they of equal or lesser precedence? The plus sign is of lesser precedence than the multiplication. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this multiplication from my stack. I'm going to put that into my answer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this plus sign into my stack right where the multiplication was because it has been popped. Then I have a 3, so I'm going to go ahead and put that 3 right here. Check it off. Now I have my closed parentheses, so I'm going to close my parentheses. And remember, when we have a closed parentheses, we pop each item one at a time between the closed parentheses and the open parentheses. Well, there's only one item, which is my plus sign. So I'm going to go ahead and pop those items. Now the open and closed parentheses do not go into our answer string. So right now, the only thing left is my asterisk. Well, I have just reached the end of my expression. What I need to do now is pop each item from the stack one at a time. There's only one item, which is this asterisk. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pop that. It goes into my answer, and now I've completed that reverse Polish notation for the given expression. Let's take a look at another one. Convert the following reverse Polish notation expressions in the infix form. They want us to go backwards. Not a problem. Let's go over going from reverse Polish notation to infix. We just follow these four simple steps. Step one, we're going to count all the characters, including both the operands and the operators. We're going to count them all up. Then what we're going to do is for step two, we're going to create a stack with the amount of total characters. Step three, the leftmost character is going to go at the top of the stack. The rightmost character goes at the bottom of the stack. Everything else goes in between. We're going to pop everything from the stack one at a time all the way down the st all the way down the stack we're following that first in last out principle or the last in first out principle now the operators the plus the minus the multiplication the division they go in between the preceding two operands so now when we have a look at this question we know what we have a better idea of what we need to do so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to push these items in and you could start from the top if you wanted to. All right, so I have populated my stack, and now I have counted, well, we counted the characters. There were seven. That's why we have seven spaces in our stack. We don't need extra spaces. That's not going to serve uh, any purpose here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop each item. I'm going to pop this three. I have part of my answer. I'm going to pop this X. I'm going to leave a space between the 3 and the x, because I know an operator is going to go between these. I just don't know what that is yet. And then I have a y. I'm going to put a space between this x and the y, because I know an operator goes there. I just don't know which one yet. Here I have a plus sign. Now, does the plus go between the 3 and the x, or the x and the y? It's going to go between the preceding two operands. So that is between the x and the y. Once we have done that, this right here becomes one term. This is no longer x and y separate. x plus y is all one whole operand. So then I have z. And we may need to put this x plus y in parentheses. We're going to find out in a minute. Ah, I have a plus sign. That doesn't go in between y and z. It goes between x plus y and the z. So I'm going to put that right here because x plus y has to be handled first now knowing the addition properties we know we can do y plus z and then add x and still get the same uh, answer so no need for parentheses yet now i have the multiplication this whole thing is now one operand so it goes between three and this operand and I put in my multiplication. Now, if I was to work this out with values of x, y, and z, I would not get the right answer. So what I need to do is I need to put in parentheses. What was the first thing to be done? Well, I know, according to my stack, x plus y plus z had to be done first. So now my final answer back in infix form is 3 times x plus y plus z. Let's go ahead and take a look at another question. Ah, we have another one. So, perfect. We've already gone over, so this will allow us a chance to practice even more and build that consistency. So we have 7y to the power of 6 plus 2 divide sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push all of these items into my stack. This time I'll start from the top. And when we start from the top, you got to go from the uh, far left. 
and it does matter what order this uh, does go in. So if you're going to start from the bottom, you got to start from the far right. If you're going to start from the top, you start from the far uh, left. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters again. All we're going to do are follow those rules. So my first one, I'm going to pop this seven. Perfect. Now I'm going to pop this Y. I'm going to leave a space between the seven and the Y because I know an operator is going to go there. I just don't know which one yet. Ah, it's going to be the caret symbol. So it's going to be seven to the power of Y. Then I have a six. Now this whole thing is one term now. This whole thing is one uh, operand. So now I have a six. I'm going to put that one down. And I have a plus sign. Now this plus is going to go not between the Y and the six. It's going to go between the seven to the power of Y and the six. Then I'm going to have a two. And now I'm going to have a division sign. Okay, so here's what we need to do. So we need a division sign. So I'm going to write that there so I don't forget. If I put the division sign between the six and the two, and I was to follow the order of operations, that would happen first. Well, that's not going to give me the answer. I know that this right here needs to happen first. I need to do 7 to the power of y plus 6. Then I can, because this is one whole operand now, this is one whole operand, the division sign goes between the preceding two operands, this one and the two. And just like that, I am done with that question. It is back into its infix form. Okay, an expression in reverse Polish notation can be evaluated on a computer system using a stack. Describe the operation of a stack. Uh, there's one of two things you can say here. You can say uh, it works by using, and this is what they're going, going to be looking for. They're going to be looking for this right here, the first in last out principle. That's one option you can say. The other option you can say is that it works on the last in first out principle. And just like that, we're ready to move on to the last question. And in this one, they want us to show the changing contents of the stack as the expression is evaluated. So what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at this expression right here. And if you need help with this, we have a video on this as well. I'll leave a link in the description on how to work through reverse Polish notation showing changes uh, in the stacks. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach take each of these characters, we're going to put one below each stack. So we're going to do two, three, ne next is the asterisk, eight, plus seven, and then my divide sign. Now that's not going to give us any points, but it makes it much easier to work with. So I have a two, next is a three. The two is still in the stack, so the three gets pushed onto the two. Now I have a multiplication sign. I need to pop these items from the stack. Now when you're popping these items from the stack, you do not write from left to right. You write from right to left. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to pop that 3. We're going to pop that 2. The asterisk goes in between these. What is 2 times 3? That is 6. So right here, I have 6. Now this 6 is still on the stack. So this 8 gets pushed on. Now I have an operator. So I'm going to pop my 8. I'm going to pop that 6. And I'm going to put that plus sign in between them. What is 6 plus 8? That is 14. My 14 is still in the stack. That 7 gets pushed on to that 14. Now, if we, you pop incorrectly, you're going to get one of two things. You, this is either going to come out to 7 divided by 14, which is 0.5 or it's going to come out to 14 divided by 7, which is 2. And usually they're going to do something uh, like that, especially with, uh, with uh, they love to put subtract uh, subtraction signs at the end to see if you get a positive or negative to see if you know what you're doing. Remember, you're going to write in the direction from right to left. So I pop this 7. I pop my 14. The divide sign goes in between them, so this is the one we are looking for, 14 divided by 7, which is 2. We are not looking for 7 divided by 14. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help our channel grow, and we'll see you guys in the next video.